Hi there, uh, welcome back to Banana Club. It is April already. Um, today I'm going to be doing some work on the overlockers and I'm going to be working on the Banana L450. So this overlock has been out for a little while now. There's also one called the L460. The difference between the two overlockers is the L460 has a sew tray that comes with it, a knee control that you can lift your foot up and down and it also has a Benina foot control, which means you can push needle down and up with your foot control. Um, this one, you can buy the sew table to go on here, but you cannot buy a knee control to go with it or the Benina foot control. So I'm going to show you on the L450 today how to do your four thread overlocking, your three thread overlocking, your flat locking and your rolled hemming. So I'll start off by showing you I have got um, four threads on my overlocker. I've got overlocking thread on my two lower loopers which are called the red and the blue looper and the red one is actually the lower looper that does all the work underneath. The blue one does all the work on top, it's called the upper looper and these two are my needles. So I put sewing thread on my needle threads because they're normally sewing a garment together. So I'm just going to run through the overlocker. You can see it has a lovely big um, bin here to put all my thread excess that I cut off and I'm just going to put uh, my right side to right side and I'm just going to sew two pieces of fabric together to show you how it seams. So you can lift your foot up and down here and you can also lift your foot up from the back, put your fabric under here and you've got two cutters working side by side to cut your fabric. So even though I'm on the fold, oh actually why don't I do this? I'll put it here and I'll sew all this mess across here so you can see it. So I'm just going to go down my raw edges this time, put my foot down and just sew down here. They sew very fast. And you can sew your whole garment together with a four thread overlock. Okay, so this is what the red looper does. Does all the stitching all the way to the edge and the blue one does all the stitching to there. Now the needle ones, if I cut through here and show you the needle tensions and having white thread on and a blue garment you wouldn't do but you can see anyway that your needle tensions have gone through the middle there. So I would put blue on my left needle if I was sewing a blue garment. Now the other thing you can do with four thread overlocking is you can sew it singly, put your stitch length on four, which is the longest stitch length here, and sew with four thread overlocking. And what that's done is ease my fabric together, and then if I take my bin off, now to take these bins off, they've got two little claws that have hooked into the machine, just tilt them upwards so that you don't break these little teeth here. All right, so it's just like a little claw that holds on. You need to tilt it backwards to take them off. Now inside here you have all your tools. So you've got um, your tweezers, you've got a needle threader and holder, you have a cleaning brush, and you have your Allen key to take your needles in and out. Okay, so that one goes back in there. That one goes back in there, and you have a little three thread converter that also lives in there, and needles, spare needles. Okay, so I'm just going to use my tweezers, and then your door shuts. So I'm going to use my tweezers, and I am going to pull up my left thread and my needle thread. And then if I pull these needles, these threads together, look how I can gather even more on my overlocker. So on a sewing machine, we would do two rows of straight stitching and pull them up, but people don't understand that you can do it on your overlocker as well. So I just wanted to quickly show you that. Now today we're going to be making some little weights. Now these weights are used for um, putting on your fabric when you're cutting them out and the whole thing has or they've all been made on the overlocker So we're going to do a stitch which is called a flat lock 
So I'm going to do it on the red fabric so you can see it. And how we do that is we turn our needles to the highest position. We get our little Allen key screwdriver and our needle holder. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our right needle. There is a little hole at the end of this and I'm going to pop it underneath. I'm then going to turn my Allen key so to the left so that my right needle pops out. Just help it down, that's it, give it a shake. And then I'm going to do up my screws, my Allen key so it doesn't undo. Now inside here, there is a place to put your needle. So you just take it out and pop it in there. Okay. And then put that back. If you put everything back, you know where it is. Now in your book, you have these wonderful pages and they tell you everything about your overlocker and what each thread, um, each tension does and how to set it. So I'm going to do a two thread flat lock with a left needle. So it tells me here my left needle needs to be 1.5 and just roll it down to 1.5. There's nothing in my right needle because I've taken it out. My upper looper needs to go to 3.5 and my lower looper needs to go to 7. Okay, then it's showing this funny little diamond. That is this little lever here which goes forward and backwards stays back for what we're doing. If it goes forward, it goes clear and you pull it back. Um, this one is the upper looper converter. We're not using it. And this one says my cutting width needs to go to 6.5. Now, if I tilt this, you can see, whoop, <laughs> you can see on here, there is some numbers from five to nine and it says 6.5. So it's pretty much on the dot back to normal. Okay, that's my cutting with. Now what that's doing is moving my top and bottom blade in and out. The next one, come along here, come along here. Stitch length 2.5. That's the bottom one here. And it needs to go... Oh no, sorry. Um, no, that's not. That is stitch length here up the top. And this one is my differential feed. So 2.5's on the dot and differential feed's on the dot. Then I can pop this back on. And I can leave my knife, I can take my knife off or put my knife down, excuse me, while I sit in front of it so I get it right. Line it up. There we are. It clicks on very firmly. It's very good. Now, so we're going to make one of these. So what I've done is I have interfaced the back of my fabric like that. And I'm just going to fold it one fold down through the middle here just so I can show you how it stitches. Then I'm going to fold the other one the other way so you can see what the wrong side looks like. Because you can use both sides of flat locking. So I'm just going to leave my knife up and I'm going to run it long as a guide. And then the next one I'll take the knife down and show you. So I'm just simply going to run this down beside my knife. I can trim or not trim, makes no difference. But what I want my overlocker to do... is I wanted to do a huge big zigzag on the back and flat lock on the front because then what I do is I pull my back fabric and I pull it firm and that is what flat locking looks like and it stitches two bits of fabric together so they end up nice and flat and on the back you get all these open rows of stitching. So now I'll show you what it looks like when we stitch it from this side. So I'm folding that just in half there, just so you can see. Oh, and I'm going to put my knife down. So remember, tilt this so you get your little, you don't break your lugs. And you can open this down, and this is where you push the knife down. So you just push it and turn it. So I can get that knife and put it away if I don't want to use it. So now I'm just turning this flat, and I'm going to line this up here. And I'm just going to stitch down this side. So you've got little markings on the foot. I'm just going to use that mark. I'm trying to stay out of your road so you can see it clearly. And you've also got a thread cutter here. So you can cut your threads if you want to. So now I've got the opposite. I've got my big zigzag on my white. And now when I open it, 
I'll get my lovely big rows of stitching on the right hand side. So you can do whichever one you like as the right side, okay? The next thing we're going to do, and those of you that came to Banina Club would have got one of these lovely little tags, is we've got some lovely Benina original tags. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the raw edges together and we're going to pop this three quarters of the way down and pop a little clip on it. And now I'm going to fold this in half like that and then put my clip on both of them. And we're going to put our overlocker onto three thread overlocking. Now all we do to change it is to go four, four, four and four, even though we haven't got that one, I always put it on four, um, and I'm not changing anything else, so now it's on three thread overlocking. So I have got my left needle in, and because I've got my left needle in, it's going to do a wide three thread. If I had put my right needle in, I would have got a narrow three thread. So I'm going to put my knife back up. And I'm going to put my little what thing back on there. Now, when you're doing this method, you're actually going to be sewing the seam twice. So you always start from your raw edge, go to your go to your um, folded edge. So I'm just going to lift my foot up, take my clip out, hold my little tag, and I'm going to sew down, just trimming off a little bit. Now, when I get to the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go past where I've sewn, put my needle up, I'm going to lift my foot up, I'm going to flip my work over, and I'm going to stitch down over top of where I've just come from. And I leave my cutter there as a guide, but you can certainly put your cutter up if you want to. I'll show you that again. Start from your raw edge. Sew down, go past where you want to stitch, lift your foot up, turn your work over, put it back under your needle and sew back up the other side. You've made a really strong seam and it's only three threads, you haven't had to go four threads. You see that? And so it's nice and neat and tidy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it through to the right side and somewhere I have a little point turner, here we are, good old point turner, and pop your point turner through, to get your points out in your corners. Now what you can put in here, you can use um, clean kitty litter for weights, you can use little rocks, you can use rice, you can use... Um, whatever you've got actually. I've got these little um, bags of granites that I use for inside teddy bears and I've bagged them out so they're the right size for here and I've got some little rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put half the bag in the bottom. This is why we want to interface our fabric so that these don't go through our fabric. Half the bag in there and then I'm going to put some of these little rocks who knew that you could buy rocks from the $2 shop? I didn't, until someone told me. So I've got nice, clean little rocks. Make it as heavy as you need to make it. And then I put my other... There we go. Okay, so now what you do, and make sure that's... Yeah, that's definitely heavy enough. Now what you do is, this is how it was. You just fold it like this. Okay, make sure there's no rocks going to go anywhere near your foot or your cutter. And then you just simply do a double um, three thread overlock again. So we want to trim all this off this time. So I'm just starting from here, we're sewing down. Go past it. Make sure you keep the rocks away from your needle. Keep this thread out here because we're going to sew over it. And we are going to go down and we're going to go back over and this time we're going to go a little bit further and we're going to sew over this little tail. Perfect. 
and then we're going to cut that. Now what we want to do is get a big eye needle and thread that back through there. Okay, so I have one somewhere. Let's have a look. This one might do the trick. That might work. And so what we do is we just thread the thread through the needle. Normally I use a wool needle. It's even better. This one is a little bit skimpy. It might do. There we are. And I get my needle and I just thread it back through all my overlocking back as far as you can go that will be about there and then pull it through and it makes a nice tight finish oh, might have gone a little bit too far no there we go whoops okay so then I cut that and this product is called fray check we can't get it at the moment, don't you love it? So if you want some, make sure you ring us up and order some. It's a clear glue. I just dab a clear little bit of clear glue on there. And that will never ever fray and you've made your little paper, your little weight for your fabrics. Now you can make these out of all sorts of fabric, obviously. And later on I'm going to show you how to make them on the sewing machine as well. Um, and we have done some here on the sewing machine out of a lovely little um, fabric and some fancy stitches. So this is a sewing fabric which is really, really cute. And we have just been to um, Benina Conference and we did these at Benina Conference on the overlocker and these are the ones we made at conference. Okay, and they've got nice little Benina tags on them. Now I'm going to show you how you make this cute little bag to store them in. So this would be a lovely gift for yourselves or for someone that sews. Um, I think they're a wonderful little idea and they're certainly useful. Really, really useful. And the other thing is don't think it's just for um, sewing garments. You can put those on the end of your cutting, board, um, cutting ruler so that it doesn't move when you're cutting your fabric out, which is really good. So to make the little bag, you start off with your piece of fabric you've got all your instructions for. You fold it longwise in half, and we're going to do the same three thread stitch on both ends. All right, so we're just going to go down here, and I will cut some off, trim it off, all the way to the bottom. These are so quick and easy to make. We've done little kits up where you can get either three um, and a bag in a kit, or you can get enough fabric to make six with one bag, whatever you'd prefer. And then trim this off again, nice and neat and tidy. And I will be showing you how to do this on the sewing machine. The way we do it on a sewing machine on this very open weave fabric is we need to do two rows of straight sewing, trim it and then a very close satin stitch over top or a zigzag. But on this one we can just whip down both sides and double stitch it. Very easy. And these bags, by the way, are really good bags to make for um, putting birthday presents in and Christmas presents. Um, we don't use paper much anymore, our family. We try and make bags and put a gift in a bag. Great idea. It wasn't hard, was it? So there's your little bag. You could leave that on the outside if you like. Or you can put it to the right side. And then we've just got a two inch strip of fabric. Of course it's banana fabric. Turn under a little quarter inch. Fold it up. Make sure when you sew it up, banana's going to be up the right way. Start from one seam. And then you can just clip this around. You can press this if you like. So just press it. You've got all the um, sizes to cut this. I think it's 34 centimetres by 2 inches wide. And you're just going to whip around this on your 3 thread overlock. You don't need to go around it twice. And um, then we'll thread a cord through it. You can put the cord in here oops, and stitch it at the same time. But just in case you catch the cord, you can do it separately. 
Okay, clips are great, aren't they? I don't have to use pins. I love my clips. And then, oh, did I cut it too short? We'll make it work. It's a bag, for goodness sakes. May have cut it a bit short. It's all right. We'll just bring this one back a little bit and then make it work. So I'll just go back around and do it, or else I could sew the seam again, but I'm not going to do that because it's only a bag that you're going to pull up and put your little things in it, your little weights. And just re-do that, giving myself a little bit more fabric to work with. Nice and easy. That's better. Oh, I won't put that one in because I'll start there. Now, when you're going to do something like this, you don't have anywhere to take this off on this overlocker. So just turn it upside down and go this way. So easy. Such a simple solution. So I'm just going to lift my foot up and I'm going to start sewing my three raw edges together. So I've got my bag and my double fold of my fabric and I'm going to just sew those all together. Put my clips over there so I can throw them in. Don't normally sit on an angle like this but I'm trying it so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Makes it easier. It's a great fabric this holy fabric actually. Really good if you want to put little gifts in it because you can see through it or you can just make fabric bags. Now when you get to here and you're joining something in a circle, make sure that tail's out of the road. Trim and overlap. Once you've overlapped it, you can just sew off. Now, because we have this wonderful fray check, we simply can just pull our thread, pull our thread, one of these, and I'll find one. There we go. Make sure that's nice and tight there. And then cut and then a little dollop of the fray check which I've put in a safe place. There it is. So um, I always pull one thread to tighten it. And then I know that that's nice and tight. And then that will dry clear. There used to be another product we had called Fray Stop. Um, it's actually, they've stopped making it because I can't get some of the ingredients now, but it dried milky and I never used it. So Fray Check um, is the one we use. Now, just turn that up. You don't need to really press it or anything. It's only a little bag. You've got a really cute little bag. And then I've put just a cotton cord or you could use a ribbon, put it through a bodkin, nice big eyed bodkin. You pull it down so that it doesn't slip out and then you just thread it from one side through to the other. So it's a nice, quick, easy way. I mean, this cotton cord is 40 cents a metre. Okay, and there you have your wonderful little bag that you can put your little weights in it, and you are all done. Too cute. So then I love little bags, and my grandies all love little bags. So you can pop your little weights in there, and these are a really nice gift, and then just pull it up with your little string. So there's your little bag with all your paperweights, uh, your fabric weights. So there, they could be paperweights. So there you go. So there's one of the things we're making today. And that's how quick and easy it was on the overlocker. So I'll see you shortly and we're going to make a scarf.